Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpstart Lightning episode, continuing the conversation on AKS Edge Essentials, and this time we're talking about the storage architecture. Play the music. Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpstart Lightning episode, and again I have Francisco with me. Francisco, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Leo? I'm doing great. I'm excited to continue to have these cool conversations with you around AKS Edge Essentials and the architecture. But before we dive into the good stuff, who you are, what is it that you do? Yeah, I'm a technical program manager here at Microsoft, working specifically on AKS Edge Essentials for the last couple of years. And Francisco, you and I, we started this uh, series on AKS Edge Essentials. We already talked about the use cases and dive deep into the world of networking. But this time, we want to talk about storage. And I wanted to share with you a quick story here. Um, about six years ago, uh, just before I moved here to the States, um, I did a session for a bunch of cloud solution architects around Kubernetes storage. Back then, it was still a bit new to me, but I wanted to do a session so I can push myself to teach storage architecture for Kubernetes. Fast forward in a few years um, after that, when I started to work on other things that's got to do with Kubernetes, when I looked at the storage, I noticed that not a lot has changed. I mean, at the end of the day, storage is storage, but you know, you do need to understand the concepts and all that. And then you and I would start talking about the AKS Edge Center stuff. And I was like, huh, this is cool if we were able to take all these small deployments and see what are our options there when it comes to storage architecture. So I was excited to have this conversation with you about storage as much as it sounds funny. Yeah, that's that's some fully it's right. Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and you know just like talk a bit about you know kind of what are the options that we have right now. Yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, so I'm not gonna go you know deep dive into our kind of AKS Edge Essentials architecture. We already talked about that. So let's go you know kind of specifically around storage, right? Um, and you can see you have both Linux and Windows workers node, uh, and there are kind of three concepts that I'm pretty sure you're familiar. Yep. Storage class, right, which is kind of represents the type of storage that you want to use in this cluster. Um, this could be, for example, local storage, NFS storage, or a fast SSD storage, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have persistent volumes. These are kind of the storage elements uh, in this cluster we actually use, or use you know, to store the data, right? And this can be found you know, manually by a cube administrator, or it could be dynamically also by a storage class. And then finally, you have you know, the, the persistent volume claims, the PVCs, which is kind of you know, when a user or a pod is running, right, they can just claim the storage, right? I want to use specific type of storage, right? I want to yeah. use, I don't know, X amount of storage, right? And I, I want to use X access, like, for example, right, right, read many, right, or read only, right? So those are kind of, you know, well-known Kubernetes storage concepts. Yeah. What I'm here to talk about is, okay, what are, what are we supporting right now with AKS Essentials? Um, so if we, if we start from right to left, right? The first thing that we have is local, you know, local storage in our Kubernetes worker node. Yeah. Uh, and here we do support the local path provisioner. Uh, this, you know, it provides a way for Kubernetes to to utilize kind of the the Linux the kind of local storage uh, right on the on the Linux node on the Linux file system, right? So basically, what it's doing, right? That pod is writing directly to the Linux file system uh, of that uh, worker node, right? AKA direct attached storage, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Then if we go to what we call remote, right, on-premises kind of storage class provisioners, we have NFS, right? So this is kind of an automatic provisioner, uh, which is using kind of NFS uh, as the com communication mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you need to have your NFS server there already set up, right? And it's just basically connecting to the NFS server using NFS protocol and just mounting that directly on the pod, right? Um, and then we have SMB that's coming also quite similar. And then we do have five, uh, host, uh, five folder sharing that's also coming. And by that, we mean you have your Windows host storage. Remember the architecture, right? And then on top yep. of that, we have the Linux or the Windows VM. Um, and by, by using host five folder sharing, where you know, you'll be able to share a, a Windows host storage hmm. folder right, directly to the Linux or the Windows worker now. Right. Yeah. And, and, and Francisco, before you just kind of talk about some of the things that you guys are working on in terms of external plugins and things that are in the roadmap here, to me, when I'm when I'm thinking about the local, the direct attached storage, and I'm thinking about the NFS or the SMB, you know, and the host file and all these options, 
it's really designed to complement what we've been saying since starting this, having this video series, which is AKS Edge Essentials is designed for small footprint deployments. So it's also designed to be efficient in the sense that taking advantage of the things that, or the fabric that you already have. So, you know, a lot of the time when people are thinking about Kubernetes in the context of, you know, the big bad cloud, um, they are thinking about that, you know, you have these big clusters and you also have the cloud storage and blobs and whatnot. This one is, you know, the way to think about it is really a bit smaller. It's tighter. It's more efficient um, in that sense because you're using what you already have. Correct. Yeah, that's that's the case. And we're seeing a lot of use cases where they actually, you know, they do have deployments uh, that maybe they were in a Kubernetes space. And now they're just, you know, they do have the hardware there. And now they're just like, hey, let's go ahead and deploy Kubernetes to uh, yeah. modernize these solutions by, you know, by AKS essentials. Definitely. Um, and then finally, you know, you have the external plugins. Uh, we're working to, to bring those, you know, we're talking about the Longhorn, OpenEBS, Rope, you know, we will bring, you know, support for that in the, in the future. Um, but yeah, so, you know, let's go ahead and, and, and see, you know, how this works. If you're okay with that. I love, I love when you're bringing me demos. Sure. So, go ahead. <clears throat> so I do have here, this is, it's just a Linux node deployment, single machine, single node mm -hmm. deployments. I can, you can see here, right? It's my, my Linux uh, K3S control plane. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you, right, the storage class. So I do have here my local pass storage YAML. Uh, if you see here, this is, I'm, I'm defining a storage class mm -hmm. that the name is local path, right? Yep. I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and I do have here both local path provisioner and NFS. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with local path provisioner and I'm going to do kubectl apply dash F, right? <clears throat> and there, there we have. So if I do kubectl, right, get storage class, there we have our storage class defined. Yeah. And the second thing that I need to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create a PVC. A persistent volume plane. Yep. So if you see here, it's a persistent volume plane, which the name is called local-path-pvc. Mm -hmm. It's using the local path storage class. Access yeah. mode is read-write once. And then I'm, I'm, I'm claiming 128 MBs. And, and for you know for the viewers that are not familiar with this concept just kind of maybe to make things a bit clearer the pvc the claim is really the the relationship it's really the id of the handshake that is about to be made between the node in that case and the persistent volume that you know that's going to be provisioned as part of the application or as part of the call to that persistent volume right so that's really what we're seeing here correct yeah so <clears throat> actually if we go I'm going to create that PVC. Mm -hmm. That's created. So I can do kubectl to get PVC. And if you see here, here the status is pending. Yeah. Right. So the PVC is there. The PVC is there, but nobody claiming, right? So if I actually do kubectl get PV, there's still no, no, there's no persistent volume because the right. node still hasn't claimed that. Right. So now let's go ahead and check our pod YAML. This is a really simple volume. We call it volume test for it. It's a really simple container. Yep. But specifically, if you see here, persistent volume claims, we're going to use the local path PVC. And we're going to go, we're going to mount that right under slash data. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and deploy kubectl, apply dash F. And there my volume is created. So if I do yep. kubectl get pods, let's do a watch. It's there. Okay, there it's running. Yep. So now if I do go, I go ahead and do the same, right? Of get PVC, now it's bound, right? Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. This is the this is the relationship that we talked about. There is there is someone that is actually claiming that piece of storage that now is getting provisioned. So 
that's really yeah. Different. And actually, if I do a get PV, right? If I, I go, I get the you know the persistent volume. Now I can see one, right? Because that PVC right. created right this PV. Yep. <clears throat> cool. Uh, so now that we have that running, um, we're gonna do a test and make sure that this <clears throat> PVC, is, you know, this PV this storage class is actually writing directly on the Linux file system. Yeah. So I'm gonna do kubectl exec right. Um, volume test. That's my my pod name. See, and we're gonna say echo. Let's call it hello jumpstart, right? Slash yep. data, and we're gonna test. I love the I love the shameless plug. <laughs> so there it is. So now <clears throat> it's already it, it, it kind of is writing right to the specific kind of a file inside. Right. <clears throat> what we want to make sure now is that it's actually writing on the Linux file system. Yep. So I can invoke a case, no command, no command, right? No type Linux. <clears throat> and then I'm going to know, uh, I'm going to just make sure I'm going to list, right? My PVC. So var lib rancher k3 storage. This is where all <clears throat> these PVCs are stored, right? Yeah. So I do, I, I, I see here that I have the PVC that was created for this uh, local path PVC. Right. right. In the previous episode, we also introduced the invoke AKS edge node command when we tested the networking. So I really like that feature. I mean, that you can just have this partial model that interact with with the operating system of the node. Yeah, it's exactly it's doing that. It's right, you know, executing the command inside the VM and grabbing you know the, the response. So right. now I'm gonna do <coughs> invoke AKS node command node command. It's gonna be Linux. And then I'm gonna do a cat, right? I'm gonna open that file. So yeah. We said it was bar, <coughs> leave, rancher, k3s, storage. And we're going to put here the PB. Yep. And, <coughs> and then, then the file was called test, right? Yep. And here you see, yeah, hello, jumpstart. Yep. I can actually even delete this pod, right? So that we make that it's persistent. So I can delete the pod. And we can see, we we'll still see, right? Yeah. The, the data yeah. is already on the, the data is already on the directed head storage. It's there. So if you're going to deploy a new pod and basically claim the same volume, you will get that data available in the new pod as well. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's our local path provisioner. Let's go ahead and now talk about the NFS one. Um, so let's, let's start by going over. The file, so I have NFS and I do have a, a you know a storage class here. Yep. So the name is NFS dash client. So let me start by deploying this. So let's do let's move to the NFS. Uh, so I'm gonna do kubectl apply dash f right, and it's called class YAML. So now if I do kubectl get the storage class. Mm -hmm. The two, right? So you have the local path that I was before, and now we have the NFS client. Yeah. Now I'm going to head and add the RBAC YAML. This is just you know, a bunch of configuration and authorization kind of mechanisms. So I'm going to just go ahead and add that also as part of you know, the deployment steps needed. And you know, while while you're doing this, Francisco, the, the use case here for, for an NFS storage provisioner is that if the, in the previous example, we talked about the local provisioner, right? Which is kind of a one-to-one -one mapping between the node and the attached storage to that specific node. It's not something that, it's not a fabric that is available for other nodes in the cluster if you have a multi-node cluster. With the NFS, this is, you know, this is where we're starting to get into the world of persistent volume with a many-to-one relationship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We see a lot of use cases where people are just, you know, sending files to one NFS server, and then you run a container that will grab the files and upload it to the cloud, for example. All right. Cool. <clears throat> so we do have all these deployed. Now let's go ahead to the deployment YAML. This is a kind of really important file because it will define three things. The first one is where, you know, the volume mounts are going to be, uh, what's the path, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, it was var lib rancher. Here we're going to use var persistent volumes. So in order to use this one, you actually need to create the folder inside mm -hmm. a Linux node. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to go and do, again, the invoke. Okay. I guess no command. I'm gonna say Linux, and the command is just like I'm gonna do all on card D. I might create a folder inside the Linux node. Right? 
what I'm missing. Oh. Yeah. So go. There it is. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> there are two other things that you need to fill in here. One is, you know, what's the, ser the NFS server IP? In my case, it's 192.168.50.46. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's put it here also. 192.168.50.46. And then the other one is what's your, your NFS path? I'm using just slash share. So once you 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 know you, you set up this file, I'm gonna save it. You need to add write this deployment. So I'm gonna do kubectl apply dash f, and you're gonna do the deployment YAML. Okay, so let's let's do the same. Let's create a PVC. Let's add the pod with the PVC, and then uh -huh. let's just you know make sure that it's actually writing correctly. Yeah. <clears throat> so I do have a PVC here. It's quite kind of this quite similar. <clears throat> the difference, right, is, you know, the name of the PVC, it's NFS-PVC. Yeah. The storage class here, it's nfs dash -cli. So we're going back here, qctl, apply, f, pvc yaml. Mm -hmm. That is, I can actually go ahead and see if, you know, that PVC is there, qctl, get pvc. And I do have the NFS PVC. There. Yep. <clears throat> now let's go to the final pod, which is quite similar, right? So it's a really simple volume test container, right? Yep. Um, mount path is slash data. And the claim here, the persistent volume claim is the NFS dash PVC. So I'm going to hit UCTL, um, apply dash F, the pod YAML. And I can do now do QCTL and get pods. <clears throat> and we do have the volume test that is there running. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. So QCTL, let's write inside the NFS storage, QCTL yeah. sec, volume test. Uh, and now we're going to do an echo, hello, jumpstart. And we're going to send these to data. Let's call it test NFS.txt. So what I'm going to go is now I'm going to just, I, I do have a, a connection here to that NFS storage. Mm -hmm. Let me refresh here. And here you have the test NFS. And I actually, you know, I can see here, let's, let's zoom in, hello, jumpstart. Cool. I can go ahead and, you know, add hello from Windows, save it. And now I'm going to do the same, just instead of echo, I'm going to do a cut just to show what's the content inside this file. And you can see there, hello from Windows. So. Nice, short, uh, short and sweet. Yeah, so that's kind of the demo. Yeah, I mean, I really like it. You know, it's like, uh, you know, when you're thinking about these type of concepts, Francisco, when uh, storage shouldn't be hard. I mean, it should be very straightforward. And the thing with persistent volumes and, and persistent volume cl claims and storage classes is that they're really the foundation for uh, basically persistent storage for applications. Like this is where a state coming into, into the conversation. So a lot of the times when we are hearing um, people talking about uh, stateless versus stateful and, and all these type of things when it comes to application development, this is really where uh, you know rubber meets the road, how people like to call it. Uh, so I like it, super, super sweet, um, um, very short um, and on to the point. Francisco, thank you so much for uh, for joining me for that uh, yet another episode in this uh, series. For the Jumpstart Lightning viewers, like and subscribe because why not? You see the content, you like it, just like and subscribe. And for Francisco, again, thank you so much for joining me. And for everyone, we're going to see you in the next time. Bye, everyone.